do you do custom camera views in Microsoft Flight Simulator? Hey everyone, it's Hotch Mania, and did you just Google that because you have no idea how to get those sweet over-the-wing views and any kind of custom views that you want without going through the cumbersome camera system in Microsoft Flight Simulator? If you're like me, it's a real pain in the butt, but there is a way to do it, and today I'm going to list it out, and I attempted to basically recreate the camera system in X-Plane 11. I thought it was the best one out there. There are many ways to do this, but in my opinion, this is the easiest way that I have found, and by easiest, I mean it's a little work up front, but then once you're good to go, you've got it set up. So first thing you're going to do is go into the control options. And this is where all your key bindings can be set. So you're going to switch over your keyboard, of course. And then you're going to switch from the filter towards the bottom on the left side all the way to all. So you want to see them all. And then you want to camera and cockpit camera. So there's a couple things that we're going to do in order to set up the camera. Again, everything we're doing right now is to set up the option to make it easier to save custom cameras. As you can see here, my custom cameras are mapped to my numpad. So save custom camera is right control plus the right numpad number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. Pretty simple. That way, when you hold on right control and bind the numpad, you're good to go. Now, if this is not set for you, you can always do so by clearing what's over over there and then setting it up, just holding on right control, validate. It's pretty simple. So this is the way I use it. So ultimately, the idea is that when you hit one of the numpads, as you can see here in load custom camera, this is step two now, you're going to be able to be able to get to the custom camera. So what we've done so far is be able to establish how to set a custom camera. We're not there yet how to actually do it, but we've got it ready to go. So the numpads are going to control the actual camera views once they're set and control, right control, plus the numpad will get us there. All right, but now we've got to move around in the cockpit, right? How do you do that? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. And first of all, I like to clear out the quick views. I don't think they're really useful at all. And this allows me to use a different key binding that we're going to use for everything else we're going to do later on. So I'm basically, as you can see here, so what I'm going to do is cockpit look up and then be able to set control and the up button. That way, when I hold down control and up, I look up. And if you do that, and comply and save, it will save everything you've got over there. And going back into the cockpit, now if I do, you do right, you do left, you're gonna do one for each one. So up, left, right, and down, and you can look around there. And now that's just allow you to look around, like change your field of view, but you still need to be able to move around. And by the way, when you're assigning any of these, if it warns you that there are any that already exist with that keybind, you wanna clear them out so it doesn't cause a problem. When you validate a new one, it might say, hey, you're already using this one, so clear that one out. All right, back into the controls one more time, and you're gonna see that we've got basically the look around. We're not moving around, we're just looking around. This is half the battle. Now we actually need to be able to move around, meaning we need to be able to you know, move forward, move back, move left, move right. In order to do that, we're gonna look for a different set of controls, and this is gonna be translate cockpit view left. I'm gonna use control A, so I'm gonna use ASDW basically to move around here. A is to the left, so control A moves me to the left. Control D moves me to the right. And if we go back and apply that now, you're going to see that I can now move right and left. Ah, okay, we're, we're getting there. Still need to do a couple more. We need to be able to move up and down and forward and backwards. So we're going to set a couple more. And the good news is once you do all this, it's good for all your aircraft. So as long as you use the same keyboard profile, you're good to go. So we're going to go back in once again. We're going to go to the camera, cockpit camera. It gets a little repetitive here. But I like to be able to set this up a few at a time so to make sure I'm not missing anything. And we're going to go down to uh, translate cockpit view forward. And I'll use control and W for that one. And then control and S in order to move backwards. So translate cockpit view backwards. There's a lot that sound like they should be all the same, but they're not. So you want to make sure that you've got them all in there correctly. All right. So now with all that in place, we've got the ability to move. And I'm clearing out, as you can see, they're, those particular controls are already bound, bound to something else. So I'm just getting rid of them because they're useless, like just not what I need. And the nice thing is you can always put that in there in order to see what's being used. So like, you know, fuel selector one off and toggle water rudder. I don't even know what those things are. Don't need them. So we're going to get rid of them. And then you apply and save. Always make sure you apply and save. Go back. And as if by magic, we can now not only look left and right, up and down, but we can also move around the cockpit. And this is truly the magic sauce that you need in order to position your camera to set up the camera views. Remember, part one. We were able to save camera views. And now in part two, we're able to move around the cockpit. And essentially, now we can get going. So I'm going to set the overhead panel. I like to position exactly the way I want. So that way I can easily look up right in the middle. I'll use 
five as my, it doesn't really matter what number you use, but I like five. That way I have all access to the overhead panel very easily. Right control five and it's set. And now I can test it by going back and forth. W of course brings you back to the main view or it's F. I forget which one it is, but anyway, you go back to the main view and then you hit five. Next we'll do the flight computer, the McDo. So I'm going to move down. And you can actually use your zoom on your mouse as well in order to get a little closer if it doesn't allow you to get too close. But position it the way you want it. It really doesn't matter which ones you use. Now you're able to set them all up. So here I'll position the camera again. And then I will hit right control and the numpad one. And now one brings me there. Five still brings me up to the top. And we've got it. Okay, but now how do you get those sweet, sweet wing views, huh? Well, there's one more thing we didn't do, which is height. How do you move up and down? Because sometimes the height is different. So we're going to use decrease cockpit view height and increase cockpit view height. And I'm gonna use control Z and control X. I don't know why I picked these letters. They just made sense to me. So <laughs> just gotta remember whatever makes sense to you. It's not bound by something else. And now we're gonna be able to move around. So to get to the wing views, you just simply need to move around with those key binds that we did, meaning you're simply gonna move around the airplane. Now there are some airplanes, we're in the Latin VFR A321, which is not a great one. Sometimes there are objects that won't let you go forward. As you're about to see in this one, the chairs are gonna get in the way and we're not gonna be able to actually get to the wing window. In the Phoenix, it's totally fine. So if you have that aircraft, you're good to go. But in this one, as you're gonna see, it's gonna stop me right there. Now I could make a camera view, but that's not good enough. So it really depends on the aircraft that you're using. In this case, I went over the Cessna and the Cessna Caravan actually works pretty darn well because the chairs are not made of solid objects and you can move through them. And here you're, I'm using those controls that we set up to have a camera view. I'll use right control. And I think this is eight I'm using. And then when you go back, an eight, and you're good to go. So as long as your camera can get there, you're fine. You're also going to need an aircraft that has a modeled cockpit. So if you're using an aircraft that doesn't have a modeled cockpit, like the Fly-By-Wire A320neo, you're out of luck with this particular method. And there's some other kung fu ways you can make it work, but I'll let other people do that. But this works as long as you've got, at the very least, a modeled cockpit for over-the-wing views. Uh, certainly, it works for any of the views within the cockpit itself, so that's good to know. But essentially, that is it. It's pretty simple in order to make this all work. Hopefully, you found this video helpful. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets them have a brand new video to share. This has been Hotch Mania. We'll talk again real soon.